Hello everyone, Rio Grande fan back here again. In this video, I'm going to actually try to show you how to change out a horn in the sound file. So with the new version 5 Loke sound decoders, we actually have access to the sound schedule. You can see that by clicking on the sound button here. This also assumes that you've downloaded the template pack. The template pack can be found on ESU's website if we go back to the firmware and software section. You can get there by hitting downloads from the home page and then firmware and software. Loke Programmer PC Software. You can download the template pack right here. Now the template pack is a couple years old. Hopefully a new one with more sounds will be coming soon from ESU. But the latest version is 1.9. So you want to download. It's a pretty big download. But you can download this and get it installed. From there, once you have it installed and you can open up your sound file, we're working with sound file S0768, which is a 567C prime mover file. You'll see that your sound library pack is over here. So now, one thing that's interesting with these new decoders is they do give you the ability to have multiple horns on the board. And these horns are changeable. If we go back to decoder, we go back to sound slots, we go back to horn, you can see that CV163 here changes the horns. And it changes the horns just by clicking the button. You can come down here and hit this and hit preview and it'll actually change the horns based on what number you have programmed or shown here in 163. You can actually pre-play them all. There's also a horn list under information. If you scroll down you'll see CV163 equals 0 gives you the Nathan P5 and 1 gives you the K5LA and so forth right on down the list. There's 15 horns preloaded too far there, but there's 15 horns preloaded. Simple. Well, let's say that the horn you want is not here. You want to add one. The nice thing with these Loke Sound 5 decoders, if you come up here to the top, you'll see this little blue bar. And if this blue bar is not near the end of the, of the line, there's room in there to add more sounds. So we can actually add more horns until we've run out of space or if you don't need one of these horns you can always replace it. So there's kind of two ways to do this. If you wanted to add a horn, what we can do is come over here to air horns in the template pack. We're in the United States so we're going to click on the USA horns. And In this case we want a Nathan horn so we're going to come down here and we're going to click on the Nathan M5. This is the horn that we want for this file. You can do a couple of different things. We can actually just put it into the file by clicking on an empty sound slot. 2, 28, 30, 31 are empty, so we can actually just move it over into a sound slot like that. And then we can come back to decoder, function mapping. In the, in the horn slot, we can actually just come in here now and, and check sound slot 2 for the M5 uncheck sound slot 3 and now we can write this to the decoder and now Nathan M5 will play when the horn button is pressed. That's probably the easiest way to add a horn into the file. But if you want this horn to be part of the rotation in CV163 right here, we actually have to do a little more work what we're going to do is we're going to actually double click on the first generation horn pack 2 right here and we're going to see part of the sound schedule. You can see all these horns are listed. If we wanted to add our M3, what we can, our M5 actually is what it was, right? So we can just come in here and do that. But the easiest way to do this is to simply just do a copy and paste. So I'm going to grab this mute and we're going to make it just a little bit bigger. We're going to grab this line. I'm going to hold down the shift key. We're going to grab this line and I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to grab that line. I'm going to do a control copy, control C, 
and I'm going to do a control V. And then I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move it down. Now you can see we've got a copy of the Leslie S5. Now you see these lines are red. Whenever you see a red line, that means it's not connected. And generally, you just have to grab it and connect it. And it's usually on this side. Once you've done that, you'll, now you'll notice here we have an F equals true and SV9 equals, or is greater than or equal to 14. We can't have that twice. So what we need to do is actually change these. So now what we're going to do is click this line. And over here, you're going to see sound CV9 is greater than 14. We're going to double click this and a little window comes up. We're going to change this just to equals. So now sound CV9 equals 14. We're good there. Click here and it changes. Down here now we have to change this one to 15. We're going to leave the greater or equal to. Double click this. And over here, I'm just going to type in 15 and hit OK. What that means is that if, if the function is true for the horn and sound CV9 is set to greater than or equal to 15, this horn will play. Now, obviously, we don't want it to be this horn, so we're, gonna, we're actually going to do a couple things. We're going to double click it. We're going to do a Control A and we're going to hit delete. And then up here in the name we're going to change this to Nathan M5. Okay, back over here in the overview tab at the top we have our Nathan M5. We're going to double click that. And we see it here. We're going to do a control A. We're going to do a control C. We're going to come back over here to the template pack where we have the blank file, the deleted one. We're going to do a control V. We're going to paste this in, if it'll do it. There we go. You have to click it, click the window to activate it, and then do a control V to paste it in. Now you see it's all disconnected and out of place. So you can just grab all this and kind of move it around. I'm going to move it until this arrow right here touches the play button. They've changed this from the early ones the play button is separate from the stop button. Not a problem, we can fix it. So we're going to just click in the white space. You're going to see these red lines. We just have to fix those a little bit. Come down, make sure it touches. Actually, because this is an exit, it's not going to go back to play. It's actually going to come down here to stop. So what we can do is actually just drag it all the way down here to the stop and now it's happy. It's a little ugly being that it going, it's going through the uh, play button. You can move this over if you'd rather have it not go through there, but it doesn't matter to the software. These two red ones have to come back to the... actually this this one actually now needs to come down to stop. This is an exit and this one needs to come to play because this is going to the init. So that's just how we have to set that up. Once this is set up, you can actually click the validate and it might give you an error. And if you get a little red X here, that means there's an error. And I was afraid this might happen. Oh, that's right. We actually have to take this F equals true and get rid of it so that it just says true. Now we can hit validate and that goes away. Not exactly sure why that requires that but that's the new requirement. So did I, did you see how that worked? I just clicked here and we just deleted the condition right here to get this to say one and a true. Once that's done, that's all there is. You're, you're pretty much done. So now we can actually get rid of this and get rid of this and you see now that we have the Nathan M5 in here is the last horn. We can close actually what we can do is go into the simulator 
you'll see it highlights the mute in green. We can come down here to sound CV, so we can click SVs. We can change this 9 now to a 15. Make sure this is actually says, has the stop square, and then you can hit function. And what that does then is it will actually send the path down here to your new horn. The function button here is a latching function, so you have to click it to start it, click it again to stop it. But that just proves that we got our horn set up correctly. Once you're done, you can just exit out of the simulator. Click simulator again to do that. So now that this is in here, what we can do is close this. We can get rid of this now because we don't need it. So we can delete the sound slot. Make sure you're deleting the correct one wherever you put the Nathan M5. We're now deleted that. Now when you come back to your decoder, we can actually, in the horn CV, we can actually put in now 15. And you can have, as you can see, up to 255 horns if you want to do. It's not a lot of horns, but if there's enough space, you can certainly do it. And we can make sure we're on the horn, and it plays here as well. And with this new version of uh, the Look Programmer software, you can now increase the volume of the horns all the way up to 255. The default is going to be 100% at 128. Okay, so there's two ways you can add a new horn. Either doing it just by adding it to a sound slot or by actually adding it to the horn list. If you find that you don't really need all these extra horns in the horn list, you can get rid of them. You can also, you know, overwrite one of them if you want your horn to be number zero or number one in here. You could certainly um, just come in here and replace one of these with the horn you want. And you could, again, just, just double click on it, delete what's here, paste in what you want, and then change the name. And uh, you could do that. Just make sure you kind of realign everything up so that it all points to the right place. Exits always have to point to the stop and inits have to point to the play and you have to make sure that you get rid of that F equals true. Other than that, it works great. Now once you've made a change here, anytime in the sound schedule, you have to rewrite the entire sound file so you have to go back up here and write sound data nothing actually changes in the decoder until you write the sound data again. And of course that does require a local programmer. So other than that, that's pretty much it. You can do this with any horn you want that's shown here. If the horn you want's not here, well you're kinda out of luck until the horn you want does get added. And hopefully they'll come out with an updated template pack that will add more horns. There's um, Leslie horns in here. There's a few miscellaneous horns. I'm not exactly sure how this uh, template pack, US Air Horns pack, will work in the V5. But uh, they're there, I guess. So there's a, a few anyway. This is by far not all of the horns that ESU has in their library which is why we're really trying to push for them to get more sound, uh, more horns added to the list. If you want to do a different horn, by all means just pour it right in. It's not too hard to do as you saw. So anyway, that's all for this video. If uh, anyone has any suggestions on videos, if you want to see something, how it works in the, in the Loke Programmer software, I'd be happy to help. And uh, hopefully guide you a little bit and give you some encouragement. There's a lot of parameters and a lot of things that you can set in these decoders and uh, sometimes it's not always easy to understand kind of what's going on. Anyway, that's it for this one. Enjoy your trains and uh, Rio Grande Fan out. <laughs>